Hey everybody, how we doing today? So another project day. Uh, I'm gonna knock out a base for my bench grinder. Uh, I've got most of the components here ready to go, so I just gotta do a little bit of grunt work first. But here's the basic plan. Uh, I got a couple of these rims. Uh, got them free at the, the metal uh, recyclers. Um, we've got some four by four post and then a couple of uh, just scrap wood there. Uh, so basically, oh, and a bed frame, uh, which is just gonna be angle iron is really what I'm gonna use it for. So the plan is I'm going to cut a square into this four by four square that the post will sit down into, okay? Then I'm gonna use some of the angle iron on the four sides to weld to the rim. And I'll have the four by four basically touching the bottom here so it'll be a contact around the edges and then the 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 wood uh, frame thing will go right through the middle and be another contact point angle iron welded and bolted to the post uh, as the post goes up i'm going to get some rebar and uh, put some of the angle iron strips and bolt them on there and then uh, weld rebar up to those contact metal points and then that'll be kind of my Christmas tree base and as it goes up it'll come up and then I'm gonna have a four by section with angle iron that bolts it here and to here and that solidifies that and then I'll cut this piece which is the perfect size as the base for the uh, bench grinder I'll cut it down to the right size using my uh, jig there and then uh, that will bolt to this and then it'll sit on top there. So I just need to make sure that this fits within the bolt holes. There's just two bolts that go through, but I wanna bolt it to this so it can't be covered up. So it just gotta be narrow for that. And then that will be my base. Uh, then I could uh, basically just roll it around out of the way and whatnot. Uh, I just kinda gotta get going on this because we might be getting some rain coming, coming soon and this stuff gets all saturated. Uh, the vise is bolted down temporarily and that'll be fine in the rain for a few for a little while But uh, I definitely need to get that up and out of there and so I can place it back against this wall So it'll be uh, out of the rain. So that's the plan. So the first thing I did is I made a little cardboard template a um, little bit oversized So these four by fours are actually three and a half by three and a half So I went three and three quarters to give myself a little extra wiggle room and then I'm going to take the template and try to figure out the best spot to kind of get it centered as best as I can and where I want the corners to end up probably not on a hole but it doesn't actually really matter because I'll be using angle iron along the flat sides not really the corners so I guess it doesn't really matter I just wanted it as centered as possible now I'm just going to get some paint shoot some paint on it that'll leave an outline and then get the grinder and, and cutting wheel and see if i can cut through this room all right shot some white paint on there but probably the wrong color choice so i've got this uh brownish color matches the rest there we go that should give me my template and there's my marks that i need to cut out all right, did a quick Home Depot run. I picked up uh, just more cutting wheels. Uh, give these a shot. They're the thin kerf, so they should just cut rather than try to grind it out. I uh, did pick up a new blade since this table saw seems to be working out. I was able, able to actually build something with it, so might as well uh, invest in it. Um, you can see how it burned right here. Partially if I'm going slow, because I was very careful, but also because that blade is probably pretty worn uh, so I got a nice diagonal blade there and then I bought some aluminum polish then I'm gonna final uh, polish this tabletop I just went through and uh, you just use my orbital sander and did up to a thousand grit so it's pretty smooth now and then I'll just throw a rag with some of this stuff and then just polish it out get the rest of that black and get it super smooth then I just need to turn this over once I've got my bit in for countersinking bit in, uh, flip it over and then polish the underside of this so it slides and then it should be good. 
All right, so let's give this new uh, cutting blade a try on this. See how it does. Uh, one thing I need to do is pick up some uh, a full face mask and then actually safety earphones. Uh, but yeah, let's give this a cut. Yeah, did a much better job. I let my little basil plant get out of hand and I don't really take care of it. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take a few of these uh, greeneries, soak them in water, get the roots flowing and then replant them and get rid of this all this dead stuff. Just make it a little bit, keep it shorter and more manageable. Okay, our hole has been made. Not too bad. Thought I might needed, would I have needed to use two of these, but it barely, uh, wore this single one down so that's good so i'll just grind up the edges get out a brush kind of depaint that area there and get it ready for some welding then i gotta start cutting up my angle iron and the rebar i just picked up i've got to let that uh, grinder cool down it is hot i don't know how long that thing's gonna last but i've got my wire wheels that i'll just knock that out once it cools down but in the meantime i can work on the table saw you can see how clean it is now so that's one i did like five stages up to a thousand grit uh, but now i also have some aluminum polish since this is aluminum top and that'll polish that up but i also have the blade that i could change right now so let me swap those out just two screws here and then uh, there's one nut that just has to come off oh, easy enough i've already cracked it loose It's on there pretty snug, but not too bad. Should be a little collar. Oh, I want to lose that washer. And there we go. What is this blade? I don't know. I mean, it's pretty rough condition. So I'll be uh, replacing it with a 40 tooth. Uh, this is a thin kerf, so should go good with this light duty table. All right, let's get this guy on there. All right, got this guy in there. Maybe. <laughs> I got to go in from underneath. Yes. Yes, that's how it has to be done. Washer. Then our nut. This is probably easier to do underneath as well. Make sure it's flush with the backing. Yep, that'll cut a finger off pretty easily. And just got to put our cover on. All right, the blade is on. A uh, couple of things that in the future I'll add to this is I'd like to add a splitter back here. Um, nobody makes anything in regards to 
a curve or a splitter for this saw you can kind of see there's really not much there but there is this wing nut and bolt here which i think was used when they had the plastic shroud that would go over as a safety um but can't get those either this is like 30 or 40 year old saw so uh but i think i could make my own splitter that kind of wraps up here and just kind of hangs over the top and then i'd like to get a um, more of a zero clearance style uh, cover uh, but you only have these two screw holes uh, so I have to kind of figure out what I could do for that but uh, those are the two things I'd like to do to make it a little bit safer and more modern um, but yeah so we got our new blade in there that looks good I'm gonna polish this up but in the meantime this is cooled off so let me get to some uh, grind cleaning and hit this whole area up I picked up these uh, abrasives purples see if those do better oh yeah Look at that, that is awesome. These are great. So that should be good for now. And then uh, once I've got this installed with the uh, angle iron in place, before I weld it, I'll see if there's any areas that I have to hit a little better. But yeah, that's like nice. All right, so that's my test piece. That fits in there well. Boom. I want a little bit oversized so that I have some uh, flex room to adjust it to get it uh, perfectly vertical, but well, not perfectly or somewhat vertically, but that'll work. So now we got to get some uh, angle iron pieces cut out. Time for the uh, bandsaw. So these are the legs that are on the, uh, the arms here. So these are nice angle iron, uh, but I got to grind these little uh, pins off here and that'll knock those off. Uh, if I had the wheels, I would leave these on because I could use them as casters, but uh, I don't have the wheels, so I'm not going to worry about it. So I'll cut those off, cut these off, and then that's just a nice piece of angle iron. I just gotta get those pins out. I don't know if I have to grind them or not. I can't freaking see anything. Uh, I gotta grind it and then punch them out. All right, just grinding those pins out and punched them out and there we go. Nice single iron, ready to be used. All right, time to use the old metal band saw here. Um, I'm gonna need three and three quarter inch pieces. I've already got it measured down and clamped. So we can fire this guy up and watch it cut. All right, now we can fire it up. Okay. Low and steady. Plus, I'm going to get some oil, but I can only do that with two hands. So let me put this down. It's a lot faster if I like turn the, the iron and then cut the long ways versus this 
this direction, but better filming. <laughs> I think I will turn it though. Well, guess maybe not, but that's how we do it. I just need to get uh, four of those. Man, so easy, hands-free. Well, that worked out perfect. I got eight of them out of that one little short piece there with a little bit of leftover, but got my brackets for the base. And then the brackets that I'm going to uh, weld the uh, rebar to, that's going to go from the rim welded up to one side. That's the rebar is going to go and support it. So I'm going to need brackets that are going to go along here, bolt to the block, and then weld to the rim. And then I'll have bolted angle iron on the wood and then welded down to the rim rebar. All right, so I think right now I'm going to do is cut down the four by four uh, to the right height that I need. Then I was going to kind of figure out uh, how high I want this, but I like where it sits right now. So, I mean, kind of get a gist how high it is. Yeah, it's nice, comfortable. You can see, I'm not crouching over. So, yeah, I'll just target uh, matching basically where that's at okay so it's sitting right at 32 and a half so we're gonna round off to 33 so I've basically set up how my mount is going to be like that so I just basically need to measure 33 inches from the top down to the bottom and then that's where my cut mark will be so that's easy enough all right, so I've got my mark there. That's going to be the length. I was thinking about using the uh, table saw, but because that extension is just so long there and I don't have an extension, that's actually really close there, but it'd be too much time to make that work. But I'm going to just use the old Stanley saw and just cut this down. And then uh, I might be able to use the saw after that. So back to some manual work. Look how straight that was. I'm better than a table saw. <laughs> All right, let's drop it in the hole. Man, it fits. Nice. Then I gotta cut one more cross member off that four by four, cause that's just a scrap piece. And then cut that down. So it's the exact size of that base and we should be good to go. All right, since I put that new blade on and I don't know the thickness compared to the old one, I'm gonna run it through my sled just to make sure it's clear. And then uh, this is the base that goes right underneath the, uh, the bench grinder there. I found out it's not wide enough. It's probably about a half an inch to, yeah, about a half an inch to an inch too narrow but it'll work for now but i'll probably have to switch this out for something else but let's see if we can get this working all right first cut with my new blade Must be the same thickness or narrow. It didn't even touch the wood, so we're good to go.
There we go. That's my mark there. I just want to cut a little bit to the left of it and then you can see how straight that is. So we are good. Blade works good. And that's going to be the immediate base. This only uses two bolts there and there. So that's good. The only thing that's why it's just a little too narrow is like the fronts are right at the edge and then the back there's probably like an eighth sitting over the edge. But that's going to be okay. All right, so I've got my half inch holes that'll fit the half inch bolts that'll go through there. Now this is another four by four that's going to mount on top of this. And then this is going to mount on top of that. Uh, so what I want to do is figure out how wide I want this piece to be. I can cut that out. And then I also need to cut angle iron that width as well. And there we go. That's the end result before I bolt it together. <laughs> so those are the main pieces at least. Grinder will just sit on top there. And bam. Yeah, I like it. I think it will work. And then uh, when I'm putting it together to keep it somewhat square, I've got this, which will allow me to work the angles and to get it so it's perpendicular to the ground, right about there. So yeah, that should make things a little bit easier. All right, so here's another section of the bed frame. So I'm gonna have to chop these guys off. I might be able to just be able to take, this has just got one little swivel point here, grind that off and then I've got this piece and that might be all I need. So let me hack that off real quick. All right, so we got the basic mock-up. That's how it's gonna sit there. Um, only thing that I need to, besides assembling it all, is uh, these will be going around it. I don't know, probably not so high, probably right about there or so. And they'll, they'll be bolted to the 4x4. And then I'm going to weld the rebar from here to there, to the underside of this. Wedge it in there, weld it, and then that'll be the support to keep it from moving. Those will be welded in. These will all be bolted in and then the hole to bolt it up to the grinder. And that's our setup there. All right, I'm going to give this uh, top a polish like I did earlier. I went uh, sanded it with the orbital sander up to a thousand grit. So it's pretty smooth, but uh, I've got some mag and aluminum polish mothers from Home Depot for seven bucks. So I'm going to use my orbital sander. I just cut up um, a little washcloth dollar 25 cent store washcloth so we're just gonna run some around here then all right just gonna put some polish on these towels lay it flat orbital sanders has those hooks Attach it there. Got to plug it in. Always helps. And... Look at all that gunk comes off. good yeah that is like soft oh my gosh <laughs> nice that is so nice like glass oh man that is just sweet all right so let me hit the other ones and it will be done and there we go smooth yeah just like glass slick now I just got to get some paste wax, finishing wax, hit that, sand, hit the bottom there with wax as well, and then this thing will be sliding with my new blade. Bam! Golden. Okay, just went and did a Home Depot run. That should be the last of the stuff. I got some self-drilling drilling bolts there. 
screws. Uh, that'll be to go through all the different brackets to the wood. Uh, I also picked up the two bolts that go through and support the uh, the bench grinder to my main block here. So I went to half inch bolts and drilled it out so that the half inch would fit. Got a big washer underneath it. Uh, because those feet were hanging over the edge just a little bit because this wasn't wide enough, I just put some of uh, this hardboard under there. And all that's doing is just supporting those uh, rubber feet so that they don't bend out of shape, they stay flat. Uh, but otherwise, I think I'm gonna work, I should work down up, but I want small victories to start with. So I think I'm gonna do, well, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drill, baby drill. All these brackets need to have basically uh, four holes each. Uh, well, the bottom ones we're gonna need, well, the bottom ones are just gonna be two bolts each because the one side is gonna be welded. So I'll just need another hole there. And then uh, this is gonna be welded along the bottom. And, oh, okay, so all, all of my small ones are just gonna need two holes. So that makes it better. And then these are gonna be the brackets for this and this, they're gonna need four. So uh, yeah, time to get to drilling. I should have bought a new drill bit. All right, I got four holes drilled in each one of these. Two for the block, two for the top. So that's my head unit complete. So that's good. Now I just got to do the small ones, just two holes in each. Got a system down. I found a good drill bit. So that makes things tons easier. And then I just have my second drill I brought out to just do the pilot hole. And then the bigger one uh, runs the bigger uh, bit through. So let me do those last eight and then we're done with the hard part all right since those are done now i can start working on the base and get that post mounted that's going to be the most technical part of it was actually thinking i was going to have to do this inside because i have no real flat areas it's all rock outside this is wood i figured it would be slanted only place i thought i could do it is inside my house but i took a measurement and this is flat right here so i think we're gonna be good just right here so I'm going to go ahead and level it up. That's leveled up. Let's level that in there and then start welding in those tabs and bolting it together. All right, I got this post leveler. So uh, I'm actually not too far off just sitting flat like that. So that's actually going to be okay. Uh, what I have the ability is once I weld the tabs in as it's close, then I could use the bolts loosening and tightening opposite ends and stuff to get it centered. And then uh, the final one will be the uh, supports so I've got a lot of adjustments that's just in the ballpark so that's good enough so like that square there and I got to go across that way so right about there was exactly level So we got it all balanced up so it should be level I've got the tabs all set up holes drilled cleaned up for the weld side corners rounded so now I'm going to tack those tack those guys in there and then uh, if all goes well I could uh, finish this off all right got the welder all set up there I cleaned off a ground area on the rim and then we're balanced tabs are all cut they're flush so I'm going to tack those in there. And if everything stays square, then I could weld them in. Then the block stays in. I spray paint the holes. And then because it's recessed down here, I can't get straight in there. I'll pre-drill the holes. And then I should be able to uh, wrench them in. So that's the plan.
Okay, got some good tacks in there. It's still level. And then uh, the bolts will tighten those in there because there's flex room on that angled metal. So, okay, let me hit some more tacks in there and then uh, wrap this up. All right, we're welded up there. Got enough gobs on there, but uh, that'll be sturdy enough. Now let me spray, well, I'll let it cool down. Hit with some spray paint the holes so I can see where I need to drill into it and get some starter so holes in there and then put some bolts in. Well, UPS just showed up and brought me my presents. Just a little bit too late, but uh, I actually got some new bits there. Those are countersinking bits. I need those to finish off my sled for here, ripping sled. And then I just got this in. Three-eighths lead plate. <laughs> that would have been perfect for that, but came a little bit late. But this is what that's for because I'm concerned with welding on this wooden floor. So this will give me it here. I could put it on top of there because that's primarily it's going to be my welding station. But now that it's running really nice, I don't want to mess the top up. So I got a steel plate I could throw up there. And then I could also throw it up here if I want to work on this side once this stuff well. As soon as the grinder's done, then this will be open. I could stick it right there. But yeah, my new welding plate. There, that's what it's for. <laughs> Just a little bit late. All right, so we are perfectly straight there and balanced. Now what I'm going to do is I got some white paint. White paint. I'm just going to spray those holes there. Those to the uh, where the bolts are going to go into the wood and uh, lock it down. But. Uh, it's recessed so I can't really get a drill or anything on there but I'll do spray it take it out drill the holes put it back run the bolts and there goes my holes where I just need to drill them so that makes it easy let me tap these guys all right they're all ready to be mounted but there is a problem there I made them at the, all the same levels and if that one goes all the way in it's gonna block that one from going in <laughs> so we have to see how that works out I might have to try to angle down and push it through now ah, we'll see another thing I need to see if I can get an extension on these that's gonna suck if I can't the long extension I'll alternate boat bolts to trim these so that they'll fit in there but I think that should work hot 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 all right I got that done yeah, it's solid it ain't going anywhere all right I don't even actually need the middle support braces I'll still probably do them but I'm gonna finish this thing off so I can actually use that while I'm building it so let me throw this top head on now mount our brackets there then the block will go and it'll get bolted from underneath so let me do that next well what do you know these cheap 4x4s are not square so I'm going to trim off the one side use this as a straight side and then trim off this side and hopefully it squares it up but yeah it wasn't even close well if you look down you'll see this thing is not even square what the heck so I'm going to run it down the saw. Fortunately, it's too high. Uh, so I'm going to have to go through it once, flip it over, and run it again, and hopefully square this off so it's a little bit better. All right, squared off that block, and we are perfect. Perfectly balanced. Nice. Sturdy. No movement. All right, now I just got to mount that to that. All right, top rails are mounted. Looks good. And now we can drop this guy on there. 
and four bolts and we'll see how it works. And last but not least, we got to tighten down the bolt that ties it all together. A 19 inch. Good. All right, there is our stand. Done. Well, I'm not done. I can still put those braces in, but I don't think I need them, but take that baby out. bit of vibration but not too bad yeah I'm happy oh there goes the quarter that should do just fine all right although the uh, bench grinder stand is fine as it is I'm gonna stick to my original plan and add the uh, rebar supports so there'll be four of them basically rim to there uh, using some more of the angle iron. Uh, it doesn't need it, but I figured, hey, this is just good practice, so might as well finish it off. So I've got my quick little rebar stand here. Um, I'm going to do two sections at 12 inch and two sections at 10 inch because I don't want to have the same problem that I had down here where the bolts run into each other <laughs> after on the same... Uh, Degree, so I'm going to do one at 12 and then offset it with one below it at a 10 on that side So let me chop up this guy with my cool saw love this thing But boy, I do need a drill press, but fortunately I have already cut and drilled these guys So they're ready to go. So I just need to get these pieces cut. So well, let's get going All right, let's use the old band saw here. Uh, I do have a new blade coming or two new blades. I think I'm getting a 14 and an 18 tooth, two different ones to try out. Uh, this one's still cutting fine and no problems with it, but it does have, I think where the weld is, uh, it's got a little bit of a hump. So try to get rid of that. Plus I don't know how old this is and how good it is because when I replace the blade on this, man, it is just a magical difference. It's a hundred times better. So, uh, Otherwise, I'll use this until I get it just using a lot of oil, but cuts it pretty quick. All right, we've got our four lengths of rebar cut. Got our four tabs here. Uh, the big positive with the bandsaw is not only just the ease of use, but also the cleanup. If I used my uh, grinder in the cutoff wheel to cut these, it would do a good job, possibly even faster, but you would have metal dust in the, the, uh, um, the dust from the material in the cutting drill all over the place. It's just nasty, but this just makes a nice clean cut, have the oiling it down so the, even the flakes just, just kind of stay together. So much cleaner. And I've got a nice seven foot length of rebar for another project so always good to have metal that stuff is pricey that's not it was only 10 bucks plus i could have gone down and got them for free from my uh metal recyclers place but it was the weekend so i went ahead and just bought it plus i don't have to clean this one up now i use my new bench grinder to clean up the ends and get them all cleaned up for welding so go on here use the wire wheel so that's basically how the braces are going to work just walled it to the tip of the rim there got these angle irons that are bolted there and then the uh, rebar just goes inside there and i'll hit that with some weld and i'll have it on two long ones on the front and back and then two shorter ones on the sides that'll pretty much be it all right the mig welder's all set up got everything cleaned up I went ahead and grounded, uh, grinded both sides so they fit in a little bit nicer. Tabs are all ground out all the paint. Rims are all ground out where they need to go so they should uh, 
be fairly clean there. So I'm gonna start tacking those. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push down so it's up against where it's gonna be, put a tack there, that holds, then I'll uh, run the bolts, two bolts through, and then I'll hit it with a weld up on top. Spot weld all four of them. Once those are all done, everything looks good, then I'll come back and hit them with more weld. Okay, looks good, solid there. So uh, let me run some bolts in there. I might just do all the welding first. Yeah, I might just tack in everything first before I bolt it in so I can get this done. All right, so I've got everything tacked in there on the bottom. So I just need to tack the top part and then I'll run the bolts and then I'll just finish hitting these uh, with some more weld and lock it in. All right, got all the bolts on. Everything's tack welded, so I'll throw this down a little bit of more welds on these and that will be it. All right, welded all the legs on the braces there. That's pretty much it. Um, I'm gonna hit these corners with the grinder real quick. Not real necessary, but the only reason to have some sharp corners there. And I'll use those for something later, hang some tools or something. But uh, yeah, heavy work is done. Just a little bit of touch up and done. All right, first project done, bam. Went ahead and rounded off those corners, so that's about it. Uh, I'm not gonna paint it. Might splash some oil all over it and then just let the uh, dirt and sawdust stick to it and then hold that oil on there and it'll be fine. I mean, it's all rusty already, so no reason to deal with it. Uh, but the basic concept is using cheap scrap metal, cheap wood, and then build a nice stand out of it. That's really solid. Pretty much kind of overkill for <laughs> a bench grinder but it works and I was able to do it with pretty much every piece of equipment that I've got was used to make that and that worked out great um, scavenged that uh, rim uh, scavenged the bed frame for those L brackets um, the 2x4 or 2x6 I had to buy a I didn't have to either I found a post out there by the street but it's been out in the weather so I wanted a nice clean one to start but I got a uh, four by four and I've got enough left over to do uh, two more stands um, and then the rebar both of the rebar and the uh, four by four were ten dollars each so not super expensive and then the most expensive thing is hardware I probably got thirty dollars in nuts and bolts that just adds up so quickly but otherwise yeah it came out really nice I'm happy to try out that stuff. Uh, it's kind of my concept that uh, a lot of times people are either wood people and they build a whole stand out of just wood or they're metal people and they go all psycho with the heavy duty metal stuff. But I like that combined, do them both. But uh, otherwise, yeah. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. Bye. Which will probably be this because I've got some pieces. I'm gonna make the new base plate for that. There's a custom other mods that I wanna do with it. I've got uh, two new blades for it. I don't think I have to do anything with that, but, uh, and then I'll be on the lookout for a uh, bench drill press is what I'm looking for. I'll take a stand up if it's cheap enough, but I'd prefer to have a bench that's a little bit movable. So a lot of this stuff I kinda of want movable so that uh, when I start working on my car and stuff on the driveway is back over there. So I wanna be able to move all this stuff that I'm using over there when I need to. So that's kinda of why I'm trying to make things everything portable and on wheels and such. So there you go, bye.